my wisdom with you. I think that's a great idea. Let's go, guys. There are a number of stylistic choices that will impact a photographic composition. The rule of thirds is a guide for the arrangement and framing of a visual composition. Basically, people think if you place the subject of your image at certain intersecting lines, your photo will look better. Let's get technical. The rule of thirds divides the frame into nine equal sections by a set of vertical and horizontal lines. Think of a tic-tac-toe grid. The nine imaginary points create reference points for placement of your most important elements. The grid can help us find a composition that is more pleasing to the eye. Let's look at some examples. In this landscape, the horizon line is almost perfectly centered on the vertical axis. Let's overlay our grid. Look at the two horizontal lines in our grid. Notice how the horizontal line of the photograph and the horizontal lines of the grid don't line up. Let's reframe so the horizon is on the lower horizontal line of our grid. How does that change the composition? Does it feel better or worse? This is a good start, but we can do more. Notice how the tree is centered on the horizontal axis of the photograph. It's right in between the two vertical lines. This is nice and certainly a valid compositional choice. But let's see if using our tic-tac-toe grid can help us make the composition even better. This time, we can focus on the vertical lines of the grid. Notice how the tree isn't on either of the two vertical lines. Instead, it's dead smack in the middle. Let's reframe our shot so that the tree is on one of the vertical lines. I can hear you saying to yourself, but which vertical line? That's pretty much up to you. Later, we can talk about some other composing tools that might help you figure that out. But really, at this point, let's just pick the left vertical line. Here is the before and after with both of our changes. What do you think? Does it change the way the photograph feels to you? Do you think it's better or worse? Which do you prefer and why? By visually putting the horizon line on the lower grid line gives the photograph a better sense of proportion and balance. Two principles of art and design. Also, by shifting the tree to the one of the vertical lines, it creates a stronger focal point. Close your eyes and then reopen them to take a fresh look at the new composition. Notice how your eye is subtly drawn to the tree in the picture. That's kind of the whole point. <laughs> Remember, these are tools to help us make sure the viewer is seeing what we are trying to say in our composition. We are using the rule of thirds to help make this message as strong as possible. Some of you are probably still confused by my hitting you with math terms like vertical and horizontal. I feel you, man, but stay with me. Let's look at another example. Here is a photograph of a person. Where is he placed in the frame? We call this a center punched frame because he is right in the center of the frame. Before we apply our tic-tac-toe grid, let's talk about photographic intent for a minute. Ask yourself, what is most important to you in this shot? What are you trying to say? We sometimes call this photographic intent. When talking about portraits, usually we want to emphasize the subject's eyes. Maybe you've heard the old saying, the eyes are the window to the soul. Well, in a portrait, our viewers often make the strongest connection to the subject when they can see their eyes. Remember, we want to help make sure that the composition helps the viewer's eyes naturally float to the point of interest. In this case, our eyes. The way we have this framed right now doesn't really do that very well. Here is our grid. Earlier, I said that our tic-tac-toe grid had four intersections that we call the points of interest. In our landscape photograph, these points of interest were important, but in this picture, they are even more important. We know that the eyes in our portrait are the most important part of our photograph, so let's reframe. So when we look at the picture, the eyes are on one of the four points of interest. Aligning the subject's eyes using the rule of thirds gives this piece more energy. Yeah, that's a good thing. Here are the before and after compositions. What do you think? Which do you think is more visually pleasing? It's okay if you're having trouble deciding, which brings me to my final point about the rule of thirds. This is a tool. Just like other tools, there are exceptions. You may be asking, how do I decide when to use the rule of thirds and when do I break it? That is a question that we will talk about for the rest of this course. But this rule, just like all elements and principles we will talk about, are the tools that help you realize your personal creative intent as an artist.
In other words, when you understand each element and principle and what they do, you can better understand how they can help you visually communicate. When confronting any choice about rules of composition, ask yourself the most important two questions in an artist's toolkit. First, what am I trying to say with this composition? And second, will this rule help me say this better? If not, is there another tool that could help me do the job better? To wrap things up, let's recap. In this episode, we looked at what I think is one of the most helpful compositional tools in your tool belt, the rule of thirds. This is really nothing more than an imaginary grid that we can visualize over top of our composition. Also, most phones and cameras have the option for you to have a visible grid on your screen. It looks just like a tic-tac-toe board with two evenly spaced horizontal lines and two evenly spaced vertical lines that create four intersections. These intersections are called our points of interest and are the areas of the composition where our eyes are naturally drawn. When we are composing our photographs, we can use this grid to help plan our frame so that it is making the strongest compositional statement possible. So, there you have it, the rule of thirds. I hope this has been helpful, and I encourage you to take the time to be in life. That is B-E. Take the time to observe, O-B-S-E-R-V-E, and soak in art, nature, and the beauty around us. It should inspire us to recognize those magical photographic moments. Stay curious. Okay, any questions? Wait for this download to talk through. Okay, can you guys see this here? Yeah? Can everybody see this? It says composition. Okay. All right, so I want to just go over what um, it was just talking about. And do you guys have your phones with you? Okay, so go ahead and take out your phones if you have your phones. And then um, go ahead and go to settings. Do you know you know what settings is? It kind of looks like that gear. It looks like this. Can you guys see that? Okay, so click on settings in your phone. Okay, and then from settings, scroll down to phone, or I mean a uh, camera. Okay, so go settings, camera, and then scroll down till you see grid, which is under composition, and turn the grid on. Yeah. Okay, so settings, phone, scroll down to where it says composition, and then turn the grid on. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and get out and then open up your camera. And you'll notice that you now have that grid on your camera, right? That same grid that Ramirez was talking about, right? Now, we're gonna talk a lot about composition and photographic composition, right? But one of the really cool things that a photographer can do is, you know, they can show you virtually something that's flat, right? Because a photograph is flat, but it gives dimension, it gives perspective, right? And the photographer has different 
things that they can do to kind of guide the viewer's eye through a photo to where it is that they want the eye to land. So what do you want your viewer to see first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth within the photo, right? And there's all kinds of stylistic choices um, that an artist can make when they're taking a photo that people don't really think about, right? So, okay, very famous photographer, um, Henry Cartier-Bresson, uh, he says, our eye constantly measures, eat, and evaluates. We alter our perspective by a slight bending of the knees. We convey the chance meeting of lines by a simple shifting of our heads a thousandth of an inch. We compose almost at the same time we press the shutter and in placing the camera closer or further from the subject, we shape the details, taming or being tamed by them, right? Um, and we're gonna go over shot size and camera to subject distance and all of that a little later. But you know what I want you to think about as you're um, taking your rule of thirds shots is just what Henry um, Brasson is saying, which is, you know, it's really about perspective. You know, if you pick up your phone and instead of taking a picture of your dog standing up, you decide to get down on their eye level and connect with them in a different way, it's gonna be a much more powerful shot. Um, and when you think about rule of thirds, rule of thirds is a guide for the framing of the things in your shot. So when I talk about the frame, what uh, what is your frame? What I'm basically talking about is what is visible? What is it that you see, right? So when I say frame, that's what I'm talking about. Um, the rule of thirds can be traced back to um, a painter, 18th century, so that's 1700s. That's how old the rule of thirds is. And really it's just all about knowing how our brain functions and where our eyes automatically go when we look at something. And what researchers have come to find is that if you have your frame and you do these tic-tac-toe things, this um, area right here is actually the area that people's eye generally will look first, right? So that's kind of interesting. As an artist, knowing that, that could change the way that you compose your shot, right? You might want to put somebody here in red because red's a warm color. It will move forward and our eyes automatically drawn there. And then this could be where you want somebody to rest their eye. Or it could be you've got something here and then you want them to go here, 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 right? Um, but again, you know, it could also be foreground, midground, background. So there's different things that you want to think about. Um, so these nine imaginary points where those lines meet on the grid, those are our reference points, right? So we know that they're three up and three down, exactly like a tic-tac-toe grid. So we see that in this shot right here, and this is what we would call a balanced shot, there's the table, there's two chairs, there's two boys the same size, there's chess pieces. So whatever is here visually is also here visually, and that creates balance. If I all of a sudden take this and put this, one side has more visual weight than the other side. Do you see that? Okay, so that's where you want to place your most in, important elements is right on one of those reference points, the intersecting lines within your grid. And the horizon line should be at the one third line, right? So horizon line is kind of interesting. Um, horizon line is think about it like if you're standing up and your eye naturally gravitates out, that's gonna be your horizon line, right? So a lot of times what people will do is they'll be like, ooh, I wanna get you know, all of this other stuff in there, so I'm gonna move my photo up. And then they've got all this other stuff here um, that's kind of taking away because the, they've shifted the horizon line way up here, right? So you want the horizon line to naturally rest where an eye would normally see it, and then put your, your items of visual interest on that, on that line. Okay, so again, taking a look at this, where does your eye naturally gravitate, right? So we've got lined up here, rule of third, lined up here with the rule of thirds. 
we have the same thing here. So if we were to place the tic-tac-toe grid over this photo right here, it would be the same thing, right? We're gonna end up where we've got one grid here and a grid here and a grid coming down. So the eyes are what will fall right on those reference points. All right, so this is how they divide it up. According to how your eye scans, 41% of people, this is where their eye will go first. 25%, it'll land here, 20 and 14. So as an artist, again, that's something that you wanna consider, right? Where do I want to, to place things and objects and people within my composition? Okay, does anyone have any questions about that so far? Okay, has everyone enabled the grid on their phone? Okay, because that's gonna help a lot. And I know for me, I always keep my grid on um, because I always like to just use it as a reference. Sometimes I don't want the people on a reference point. Sometimes I specifically do want them center punched. But even then, those lines always, I just always like it because that's one thing I don't have to think about. It kind of just helps me in terms of like, um, actual placement. So I like to keep it. I also know people that don't like to have it on. Again, we've got this beautiful reflective shot, um, main area on the, the right third. Oh, you don't like to have that on or or the 20% over here. You mean this is where your eye naturally gravitates? Yeah, it kind of is interesting. It's something, you know, you guys should think about that this week as you go about your day and you look at different visual images because, you know, especially with Instagram and, and TikTok and all of that, like you guys live in a world of visual imagery um, and we're inundated with images all day. So start taking a look at the images and where things fall and kind of look at them differently because after this class, you will start to look at visual images differently from a color perspective, from a compositional placement. Um, and then when you go to approach things, you'll approach it differently too. Okay, so you want to avoid placing your subject in the very center of the frame, at least based on the rule of thirds. Again, that's not to mean that you can't center punch or place them somewhere else, but look at how different, um, I think this is just a really interesting shot. But again, we've got our eye line right here at the top third, right? So this is where our eyes are gonna go. Again, this is here. I actually would have liked to see that photo opened up a little bit. It's a little compact for me. But like my grandma used to say, there's a lid for every pot. I think this is a beautiful shot. Again, we've got the car coming in on this side, beautiful raindrops, the light coming in this way, and then we've got everybody placed right here, right? Here's some other shots. Again, we've got the eye line on the upper third. And here too, we've got our subjects on each side of the third. I thought that was such a cute shot with the tail coming down and the ribbon um, and the, the, um, the tail here and then the tail there. I love that. Notice how shadows and you know the water and things like that just make things more interesting. They add textural elements and depth. So again, rule of thirds is really about where are you going to place things in your frame? We've got our model right here on the left third. We've got her upper body that's gonna fall on the line, right? Yeah, I'd wondered if they did this as a composite in Photoshop. Yeah, she's got her angel wings. It is gorgeous, isn't it? There could be so many metaphorical meanings for it. 
but it does look like a composite, doesn't it? Like look at even the line here, the dividing line of, well, that's what I think that they, I think they photoshopped it in. Like it could be a photo they had of the bird and then they just take the wings and then they photoshop them behind. Yeah, I bet that, I bet the wings on here was probably even a separate image. And then they, cause look at the way the bird is here. You couldn't get that shadow. Yeah, that's another thing too. You wanna start paying attention to light. Like where is your light coming from when you're taking photos? And we'll talk more about that later. Um, but, and you guys have probably even noticed from Zoom, when you're backlit, it creates more of a silhouette, right? Front light directly in front of somebody is considered beauty light. Yet at the same time, if you put that light too far up and it's an overhead light, it's gonna cast these darkened like godfather shadows. So, um, you know, the, the light that photographers really love is like the golden hour, you know, right when the sun's setting or the sun ri is rising and it's this beautiful golden light. Um, and it's nice soft wraparound light that doesn't give you these harsh shadows. Um, here again, positioning on the rule. Notice how just the positioning of a subject in a frame and color and textural elements can add a lot. So, you know, as you're taking these shots, don't just like, there it is, just stand there and I'll take this click, right? Um, because that's, we don't wanna be copying. We wanna, you know, consider the, the photograph an element of art, not just, let me just snap. Um, here's what's known as eye room or leading room. Notice in this frame right here, eyes are beautifully positioned on the upper third, um, but notice that there's no eye room here, right? And because he's flushed at the edge of his frame, it creates an element of tension. Whereas when somebody has that eye room, it just gives a, an element of relaxation and more conversational element, like somebody sitting on the other side of him. Whereas the other one just, has more, right? So think about that too, you know, when you're using just the rule of thirds and playing around with that. Do you have eye room? Do you not have eye room? You know, and start playing around with the edges of that, of that frame. Okay, so the eye naturally gravitates to points of interest. So using the rule of thirds intersecting points creates balance and offers the viewer's eye and and uh, basically a more pleasing composition. So notice here how it's the lower third. I just think that's so cute. And I think this is so uh, great too. It's like, you know, we've got the dog on the upper third, but then here is the lower third here. And so it covers the whole dog, but there's still so many interesting things down here to look at, right? So think about that as you're composing your shots, like what is in there? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> blind dog and goat legs. Look at that guy there. He's turned around like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. And then you've got somebody else down yeah. there. And yeah, you know, I love the fact that you can see his white socks too. And just the hand. And then we've got the black and white of the dog. The shot's black and white. So again, we're dealing with value here, aren't we? We've got our darkest darks. And then we can go through value, color, to the lightest of the whites, right? A complete grayscale, that's what value is. From, from the darkest darks, the shadows, um, you have your hue, which is your color, and then you've got your tints, your tones, and your shades. And we'll go over color a little later. So that should be what your camera looks like when your grid is enabled, yes? Okay, so here's what I wanna talk to you about. Um, do you guys need me to, um, cause what I can do today is I can put up a question today instead of this assignment. When I get home, I can just add a question to the site about rule of thirds. Um, just so you can explain rule of thirds to me. And then, um, or I can go ahead and give you the assignment. I just want to make sure that, um, you're not overloaded with assignments. 
because I want to make sure that you have your value assignment done, which is due today. So let me, I guess I'll go over the assignment and then we'll, we'll see what we want to do. Okay. All right. So here's the first video that I showed you right here, right? So if you go to assignments, let me go here so you can see student view. If you go to assignments, and if you also go up here, do you see this? Go to semester two. That helps. It takes a lot of the other stuff away, even though I tried to hide certain things. So this is your first assignment right here. You can't see anything. You can't see anything? No. Stop screen share. This is screen one, right? Okay, can you see this? Okay, so if you go right here, you can click semester two. Here's your assignments. Here's the first assignment. Here's, if I click on this, here's the video that I showed you. Here's the PDF that I just showed you. Here's the assignment right here and the rubrics right there. And then here's the assignment that also has photo references on it. Because I always like to have references so I can see things differently. Okay, so this is your assignment, okay? Select an object. Your object could be something every day, like a chair, a spoon, a key. Choose something with a clear artistic purpose, right? So what is this notion that you wanna get across? Is there a motion that you wanna convey? So think about as an artist, what it is that you want your audience to think about or feel um, as they see your piece. Um, select your locations and then actively create your composition. So are you adding props? What colors are you using, right? So think about that. Take as many photos as you can that place your object on one of the third lines, right? So using those reference points. So do I wanna use that top reference point that I know that automatically 25% of the people go? or do I wanna go down to this reference point or this one or this one, right? So make sure, you know, if you're doing, if you're working um, with a person and if you wanna work with a person, I'm fine with that, but you might wanna, you know, it, it's not a portrait, so think about that. So that's why it's easier to work with an object. Um, and then take as many photos as you can because you can take a thousand photos and end up with five good ones, honestly. Um, use the grid that you enabled on your phone Select your five um, best photos that you submit. And you're gonna name your photos, ROT1, ROT2, three, four, and five, okay? So ROT for rule of thirds. And you export them as a JPEG. They have to be in JPEGs. I cannot take HEIC files. My computer does not open them. And then you'll upload them to Canvas. Remember you do um, add a file and then you can just keep adding your five photos. Don't send them in a Word document or a PowerPoint. Um, in order to name your photo, you know how it'll say, and I have it down here too, I wrote it twice. So here's some other examples. Here's a chair on the rule of thirds. Here's another one, just happens to be a different color. Here's another, here's another chair. Here's other chairs. And then down here I have um, bike tires right? And then another one there, bicycles on the rule of thirds. So in order to name it, you'll notice that when you have a photo, it'll say IMG and then underscore number, number, number dot JPEG. If you double click that IMG, and I mean, you have to go click, click, you can't sit there and go click, 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 click. What you'll notice is a box will open up and you can name everything before the .jpg. Don't get rid of the .jpg. You have to you have to leave that there. Okay, so this is your assignment for this week. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, 
Um, if you want to do, if you want to do like a different object or something, you mean? Yeah, if you want to use a different object for each of your five photos, I'm fine with that. Um, I just want to make sure that you understand the rule of thirds. So it's really about compositional placement. Yeah, but absolutely, because that'll make it more interesting for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of this is in Canvas. The, the video I showed you, the PDF I just went over, this assignment. Um, and then if you click on the PDF, that's when you'll also see the photo examples. Those are all on um, Canvas. Okay, any other questions, guys? No? All right, if you have any questions, let me know, okay? Um, and, you know, for those of you too, if there is anyone that does not have a camera or a phone that you can use to take these photos, and, you know, you really love drawing, you know, I'm, I'm open to if you want to submit drawings that highlight, you know, your subject's placement, like their eyes or whatever, on those particular um, focal point or uh, grid line intersections, okay? Okay, any questions? I know it, it seems really easy when people are like, oh, rule of thirds, but for some reason, sometimes it's really challenging for people to constantly frame those eyes on the rule of thirds. If we were here, we'd all be taking photos right now and I'd have you in front of a backdrop or you could go outside and we could practice. Um, but so what I'd like everybody to do is before we check out, I'd like everybody to position their eye line on one of the points of the, um, based on the rule of thirds. So right now I'm on the upper third, my eyes. So Freya, you're actually naturally positioned there. So Julia, you're right there. Okay, Annabelle, yeah, you need to move over a little bit. There you go, because you don't want to be center punched. Nice. Okay, so Katya, you want to move over just a little bit. Look at Riley. Riley's like. <laughs> okay, awesome. And then Bailey, what you'd want to do is you'd want to move over one. So you'd be either want to be here, because see right now, Bailey, you're center punched. You're right in the center of the frame. Good. So if you go here, there's the lower third, right? Here's my eye line here. So this is great if you have somebody sitting and somebody standing, right? You place one person here, their eye lines here, and then the other eye lines here. Now, if I wanted to go up, I'd go up to this eye line, or I can go over to this one, or I can go down to this one, right? So there's those four intersecting lines on the grid, and that's where you want to put that important thing. When you're dealing with people, it's always the eyes, right? Okay, guys. I will see you next week. If you have any questions, let me know. Sorry it was a rough go. Um, super frustrating, I know. Um, but it ended up working out okay, right? Okay. So let me know if you have any questions and have fun with this. Should be fun. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I know we're all waving. <laughs>